Hey, what's up guys? It's ICPU Tips here, and I got a great uh, VFX breakdown video today for you guys. It's of the uh, car bomb video that I shot a couple days ago. It's just going over what, everything it took to uh, make the shot what it is, really. So anyways, let's start with the very uh, the bottom stuff here. Um, I'm going to turn that. No, oh, we're going to keep that. Okay. So anyways, let's go to this. Uh, whoops, this is the footage that we started with. It's, uh, I, it's actually didn't shoot in 720p like it should have on the iPhone 4. Uh, this was shot in iPhone 4. And um, I think it shot in 540 or 520, something like that. So we just stretched it, or less, maybe less resolution. We stretched it to the screen um, to make it 720p. And then when you add 720p effects in that are stock 720p, um, it kind of looks a little out of place. So that's why on some things I added a little directional blur. But I uh, could have done better with it, with the blurs at least. But uh, anyways, let's get started. So we took this and um, we added... Um, we'll start with the, the car bomb. I have two car bombs here. Um, let's put those visuals on. If you look, I have down here we have this one that's really short, and that's basically the, the beginning of this one, which doesn't appear until after the top one. Um, because I wanted where the where the car frame start where the car bomb started, it was um, it was kind of bad how it started and like how it started back there by like the trunk and the wheels. So I, I took this little bit here and sped it up a lot, and then added the other one came in when the actual explosion sort of started. Um, so that's all that's all that that is just kind of speeding up the beginning. Um, you can kind of see it, but uh, that's that's what those two th two are there. Um, and then basically, when the fire really started, I added this uh, copy of the original shot that we had, put it on add mode, um, I color tinted it orange, and then added two masks. Um, if you look at the masks that I have, there's two circular kind of elliptical, elliptical um, masks that I feathered out and changed the opacity, as you can see down here, um, to flicker on and off, sort of to resemble that the fire was flickering uh, against the camera over here and then against that house which is like a realistic thing and then um <clears throat> yeah so that's that's how i kind of got the orange tint um of like the flickering and then once the fire started um if you really look it got kind of thin toward like around here so what i ended up doing was added this uh big fire effect which comes in a couple frames later just to kind of thicken it back up a little bit and i uh, added a tint to it just to make it a little more reddish. Um, so that was that's basically that. Just to kind of make sure you couldn't see the car under there, which wasn't disappeared because I did, did not mask it out. Um, and then once those both kind of died out a little bit, I added um, this dark smoke effect from the action. All these effects are from the Action Essentials two pack. Um, but I added this dark smoke, which I I took off the beginning and then I sped the whole thing up through time stretch. And you can see that kind of cover some more up and then makes it look a little bit more realistic as I added the dark smoke um, and sorry this is rendering so slowly as I added the dark smoke in I changed some of the fire around it I changed the opacity to make it look like it blended in more just so it wasn't too thick and thin and kind of split down the middle as you can see over here and then once the explosion started to happen after like before this fire came in I'll drag us back a little bit um, I had different debris I had uh, bouncing debris one and uh, two copies of debris uh, three different sized and stuff like that and um, the reason there's two copies of, the, of the, the third one is because when it ends I didn't want the scene to end and the debris would just disappear so I took the very ending shot which is identical on both sides and I took it and freeze framed it and drag it and uh, dragged it to like where I wanted it to go so you can so if you see um, this this one here, bouncing debris three, ends, and then the freeze frame shot comes in, just so it kind of stays with the shot um, longer than it would normally like do that. That's the only reason there's two there, and then the regular bouncing debris, um, just is it's more of a bigger kind of debris um, that was added in, and then uh, I added the motion tracker that was in to. Um, uh, the motion tracker of null one was attached to like over here um, on a high contrast point 
toward like the same plane where the car was um, and then basically what I did was attached all the effects if you can see I parented them to null one null one was parented to the mo or the target to the motion tracker and then um, that's basically that this stays off since it's an alpha mat and then the alpha mat on this one and then uh, basically with this turned off if you look at it you see our actor your guy kind of just runs under the fire um, I rotoscoped him out and then added these two mats here and to bring him above the fire for each frame that he was in the, sh the shot like that um, if you haven't seen the rotoscoping tutorial on that it's really uh, it's real quick and really easy check it out um, uh, it's a pretty good one but other than that that that's pretty much what makes the this, this shot what it is um, besides some of the directional blurs that was added um, on a different adjustment layers that could be placed in um, but uh, other than that it's pretty simple it just takes a lot of time rotoscoping the scene really wasn't a whole lot um, you know but some of the effects took a while with the uh, little bit of blurring and then the tint masks that come up um, but other than that it was a pretty fun scene to shoot and uh, you know it was interesting and a good experience so don't forget to uh, comment and subscribe to my channel for more VFX tutorials breakdowns and videos